Are you looking to invest in real estate, but don't have hours in a day to analyze deals? Well, then this video is for you, as we'll be covering the top three real estate rules of thumb that investors use to save time and focus on the deals that will make them money. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Matthew, and this is my channel where I share everything about real estate, finance, or just personal development in general. So if you're interested in that type of content of increasing your financial literacy, or just being overall a more effective and efficient human being, make sure to hit the subscribe button, as well as drop the like if you enjoy this video, as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So in today's video, we'll be covering the top three rules of thumb that help real estate investors analyze more deals quickly. Now notice I said analyze and not purchase, and that's extremely important as these rules of thumb are just a quick and dirty way to analyze a lot of properties, allowing you to focus your time and energy on the properties that are going to make the best sense. So make sure always to do your full due diligence and full analysis on a property before you end up purchasing. So with that said, let's hop on in to the first rule of thumb, the 2% rule, or as some other people call it, the 1% rule. This is one of the most common rules of thumb. And essentially what this is, is it looking at the monthly monthly rent divided by the property price or property value in a percentage form. So if you got a little confused there, that's all right. Let's break this down using a simple example. So let's say you're looking at a property that rents out for $1,500 a month and you're looking to purchase it for $180,000. Well, in a percentage form, this would look like 0.8 and therefore it would not pass either the 1% or 2% rule. However, let's say you had a property still renting out for 1500 however the purchase price was 120,000 in this case it would be 1.25 percent now this wouldn't pass the two percent rule but it would pass the one percent rule so now that you have a better understanding of how to get this number that you're looking for what do the numbers actually mean well the one or two percent rule gives a quick and dirty way to see if a property would cash flow usually the higher the percentage the more likely it is that that property is going to be positively cash flowing so Typically, if you find properties under 1%, they're not going to cash flow. 1% to 2%, they could possibly cash flow and need a bit more due diligence done on them. And usually over 2%, you would find properties that cash flow pretty well. Now, there are factors that could affect this number, like price, location, taxes, property type, etc. However, the more deals you analyze, the more trends you'll pick up for the specific property type you're looking for or geographic area you're looking in. And so now, if a friend comes to talk to you and says that they have this amazing deal for a property for you to buy and you know it rents out for 1500 and they're asking for $180,000, you can quickly do the math in your head and see that that does not pass the 1% test and you should no longer pursue that deal or look further into that deal that the friend is advising you about. So this rule of thumb is great for understanding if the property will produce cash flow, but how much cash flow can we expect? Well, the next rule of thumb will help cover that, and that's the 50% rule. This rule is built on the foundation that over the long run, 50% of your income will be spent on operating expenses. So what are operating expenses? Well, operating expenses are all expenses that you need to run a property except your mortgage payment. So these could include any taxes, insurance, utilities, repairs, vacancies, any expenses that the landlord has occurring. So the 50% rule helps investors Group all of these expenses into one number, the 50% number. So let's break it down into another simple example. So let's say you're looking at a property that you know rents out for $2,000. Immediately, you wanna take 50% of that off the top for the operating expenses using the 50% rule. So therefore, we're left with $1,000. Now you wanna analyze if this $1,000 is enough left to cover the mortgage payment. So if the mortgage payment for this property is only $600, then you know that the quick and dirty number for the cash flow would be $400 a month. However, if the mortgage payment was $1,200, you know that this property probably isn't the best for you as you'd be down $200 each month you're renting out this property. Now, of course, this number can change like the last rule of thumb, depending on your geographic location, your taxes and property type. However, over the long run, you can assume that 50% of all your income will be going towards operating expenses. This is a great rule of thumb as it keeps investors in check and keeps them aware that there are a lot of expenses that come 
with owning real estate. So yeah, you might only need a roof every 20 years, but if that roof costs you $10,000, that roof over the 10 year span is gonna cost you $43 each month. So it's great that this 50% rule takes into account these long-term expenses. So those last two rules were designed for people looking to hold rental properties. Now this next rule of thumb is designed for all those house flippers and wholesalers out there. And what it does is it allows you to determine how much you should spend on purchasing a property. So essentially what the 70% rule states is the maximum price you should pay, which is 70% of the after repair value. In other words, what it would sell for after it's fixed up minus the repair cost. So if you're confused, that's all right. Let's hop on into another quick example to help explain this rule of thumb. So let's say you found a property that you know for sure will sell for $300,000 once it is all fixed up. However, you know in order to get it all fixed up, it's gonna cost you $50,000. So using the 70% rule, we would do 30,000 times 70% minus the repair cost of $50,000, leaving you with the purchase price of $160,000. So essentially this rule states, if you're able to get this property for under $160,000, it would be a great deal. Now, of course, this is just again, a rule of thumb and you need to do your due diligence before pulling the trigger on purchasing a property. Now, as you're using the 70% rule, you need to be aware of the flaws. And one of the biggest flaws it has is it assumes that 30% of the selling price will be enough to cover the closing costs, the lawyer's fees, the taxes, the sales representation on both the buyer and seller side, and most importantly, your profit. As a result of this assumption, if you have a property with a low after repair value, let's say of $50,000, it is assuming that $15,000 is enough to cover all these expenses, which might end up underestimating the number of expenses you have to incur and therefore leaving you with less of a profit. Now the opposite could be true, as if you find a property with a high after repair value, it could overestimate these expenses. So let's say you find a deal with an after repair value of $700,000 and you know, again, it will take 50,000 to repair. The 70% rule would suggest that you only purchase it up to $440,000. Now it might be extremely hard in your market Market to find a $700,000 property only going for $440,000. So in summary, if someone strictly sticks to the 70% rule, they can walk in to a bunch of poor deals or never find a deal that is ever good enough for them. That's why it's extremely important to remember that these are just rules of thumb and always to follow up with your due diligence before going ahead with any deal. And as you analyze more deals in your location with the property type you're looking for, you'll start to notice trends and develop a baseline yourself. So I know we covered a lot, so let's quickly recap. The first two rules were all about rental properties with the first rule of thumb being the one or 2% rule. And this sees how likely it is for a property to produce cash flow. The second rule of thumb was the 50% rule. And and this is estimating how much cash flow you can expect from a property. The final rule of thumb we discussed was for our wholesalers and our house flippers out there. And that's the 70% rule, which determines the max price point you should purchase a house for. All right, so now you know the tools that the experienced real estate investors use to analyze more deals, allowing them to be more directionally focused with their energy. If this video is gonna help save you time or you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in any of this content around real estate, finance, or personal development, make sure to hit the subscribe button as you're not going to want to miss out on any of the future videos I post. Other than that, I hope you have a great and successful week and I'll talk to you soon.